Bible says that there was this lad owner, he had this farm and he leased it out just like God owns the earth. How many of you know God owns the earth? And because God owns the earth, this is what happens. He has given us the stewardship, the ownership of this earth. And we are tilling the ground. We are going to have some fruit. We are going to have some labor put into this land. And above all, this land is an inheritance. Praise God. Is a what? Is an inheritance. The scripture tells us he sent this lad owner sent servants to go and check how things were going. But when these servants were coming to the land, they beat them, they killed them, they harassed them. And he sent another group, then these guys who had leased the praise. They killed the other servants. They did likewise. Then the owner said, I will now send my son. This story is a picture of how God who did send his son on the earth. And the people on the earth, instead of receiving the son of God, Jesus, they went ahead and also killed him. Amen. I don't want to dwell much on the interpretation here. I want to pick something and run with it. Finally, this son, in verse 37, if you can look at verse 37, last of all, he sent his son. The word son there is not capital S. It's son, which means <clears throat> small s, can be representative. Uh, yes, son of God, and the son who is a born-again believer on the earth, <clears throat> excuse me, each one of us, is a son. Now, what is the battle here? The battle is a battle in verse 38. When they saw the son, they said among themselves, good, this is the hair. <clears throat> Come, let us do what? Let us kill him and seize his inheritance. Let me tell you, you know, I had this statement in the spirit and it made my world stand. That the greatest battle we have as believers is a battle for the inheritance. So I want you to write this down because today, Tutavurugana in the spirit, with those that be in the spirit that try to steal, kill, and try to destroy simply for the sake of seizing the inheritance of the saints. Battering for your inheritance is what we're going to be sharing. Glory to Jesus. Battering for your inheritance. Glory. Now, so they picked this son. They said, let's kill him because this is a hair. A hair is the one who inherits God. How many of you know in scripture, we are joint heirs with Christ? If we are joint heirs with Christ, because we are sons of God, then if they are tempted to kill the son, to seize him and get the inheritance from him, they will, in the spirit. When I say they will, I will show you who these are. They will at attempt in the same way to seize your inheritance you know, try to deny you your spiritual position. Try to stop you from becoming who God ever wanted you to become. But let me tell you, we cannot live our lives to fit. God has anointed us that we can battle for our inheritance. Hallelujah. We can battle for our inheritance in this season. It's my prayer that God would empower you in this month of June. To lay hand on what 
is yours. Hallelujah. Many times, when you think of inheritance, the general charismatic church thinks in terms of prosperity. Yes, it's part of it. It's part of it. The house, the car, the what. But above all, this what we call the true riches. Let me tell you, life on earth for a Christian is a spiritual life. It's not a physical life. If we are not moving in the spirit, we will miss out a lot. If we are not able to battle in the spirit, we will be lost. If we are not able to have spiritual understanding, we will be delayed in our journey towards our inheritance and laying hold of our inheritance in God. Hallelujah. And so, if they are tempted to seize the Son of God and indeed try to get this inheritance out of their hand, they will try to do the same for this generation. But I want you to know we can fight for our inheritance this morning and this month of June in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Go to Ephesians and let me show you a couple of scriptures before we begin this battle. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, verse, uh, oh my God, this, every time I read the book of Ephesians, I find long sentences. Uh, maybe verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. In him, Christ, we have what in this verse? We have redemption through his blood. Secondly, we have forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Amen. And also that happens because of the riches of his grace. God is rich. Praise God. Down in verse 11 of that Ephesians 1, the Bible says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Put that scripture this way from the last statement right there. God in his wisdom, counsel. God in his counsel, in his wisdom, praise God. He worked it out that there is a great purpose for our lives. Amen. He has predestined, he has made plans before. That each one of us shall obtain in Christ the inheritance. Praise God. We shall be heirs. We are the ones who shall be left with God's stuff. Hmm. We are the ones who shall inherit God. Can you imagine God chooses that all this that he has shall be owned by his people. What a privilege. We who are not a people have now been brought to be a people. In fact, because of our color, there are still certain people who are Gentiles, who are Gentiles like us because of color, who have never appreciated because television, media, you know, and, and socialization has placed the white man kind of to be above, which is a lie. And kind of the black man is the last one in this equation. And because most Christian television is from out there in the West, Africa is just coming up. We look like we are the tail, but it's a lie. Paul writing to the Ephesians said that the Jews are the ones who are the sons of the promise to Abraham. But Paul was anointed by God to bring the message to the Gentiles and tell the Gentiles, listen, this mystery of Christ is uh, such that the Gentiles are now part of this game plan. We have been brought into this mystery of the gospel. Praise God. In Christ, we are part of the commonwealth of Israel. And this inheritance is ours also. Praise God. So, according to his will, verse 12 says that we do know that, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So, we are going to obtain an inheritance because we trusted in Christ. Verse 13, in him also uh, trusted. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. What 
brings us to a place where we can obtain an inheritance. This is it. That we trusted God. We received the word of truth. Praise God. The word you receive. That word has innate everything you need. Oh my God. I pray that your spiritual antennas open this morning. For you to receive everything that the spirit of God wants you to receive. Through the word of truth. Secondly, the gospel of your salvation. Are you aware? By simply coming to Christ. You came to an inheritance that is amazing. Praise God. Through the gospel of your salvation, in him also, in whom also, having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Praise God. This Holy Spirit is the guarantee. In fact, that's the next verse. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? Look at verse 14. Right there, he's the guarantee of our inheritance. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. To the praise of his glory. There is a possession which is purchased. That's part of our inheritance. Glory to God. It shall be redeemed. How? Bought, brought, bought back. Shall be taken back. Brought to a place where we can access. The blood of Jesus. The salvation. The word of truth. The gospel. Us believing. Trusting in God. Brings into visibility our inheritance. Praise God. Our inheritance. Let me break it down. It includes... The anointing God designed that you shall walk in is your inheritance. What level of anointing have you touched? Have you obtained? Have you seen in your life? Have you walked in? I pray that you come into a place of liberty to enjoy the highest level of anointing that is yours. Oh my God. So anointing is part of your inheritance. Calling. You are called by God. Placed on the earth for a specific purpose. That's part of your inheritance. Glory to God. There is room for you. There is a vacancy for you in the kingdom. In my father's house. There are many mansions. It's not houses. It is dwelling places. It is rooms. It is opportunities. There is a place for you in the heart of God. In the whole kingdom of God, his rule and dominion, there is a place for you. That's part of the inheritance. None of you is left outside the camp. You are not leprous. You are not leprous. And in a case you are, I preached another day, redemption has brought all the leprous men that were outside the camp back into the camp their thumb has been anointed they can come back and put a seal on their title their toe big toe has been anointed they can walk back to their inheritance glory to god their right ear has been anointed this is leviticus 14 their right ear has been anointed so that now they can hear the gospel truth and believe praise god so that they can access their inheritance whether it is anointing whether it is your calling whether it is your salvation is your inheritance praise god whether it is your place in the father's heart that's your inheritance everything is time for us to think that we must battle for this inheritance the good news is this the holy spirit is not only the seal which is a guarantee that we shall make it we shall arrive, we shall lay hold of, we shall enjoy, we shall inherit. It's not only there's a guarantee, the Holy Ghost, but he is our helper. He's our helper to cause us to get this inheritance we're talking about. Praise God. Let me read a scripture in First Peter uh, regarding this inheritance. Chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
from the dead. Hold on before we go to verse 4. So blessed be God our Father. Amen. Say blessed be God our Father. What does that mean? We speak well of our Father. Amen. Why do we speak well of him? Because by the abundance of his mercy, he has decided to do something. He has begotten us. Do you see the word begotten? How God loved the world. So he sent his only begotten. What does that mean? From the father. Born from the father. Born from above. Salvation means we are born from the father. Begotten, praise God. Now, he has begotten us again to this living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. So, when the Holy Spirit moved in the grave of Jesus and brought him out, that same power that God worked is the same power that is working to get us to our inheritance. Amen. Verse 4. So he's done that, brought us to an inheritance. This inheritance is unique, is incorruptible, hmm. is undefiled, glory to God. It does not fade away, hallelujah. It is reserved even for you in heaven. This is one of those dimensions of inheritance, that which God has reserved for us in heaven. We have to battle for it. We got to battle for it. We don't want to lose. We can't lose on the earth and lose in heaven. We will not lose. We will win in heaven. We win on the earth. Glory to God. What an inheritance which is kept and reserved for us. Glory to God. Colossians chapter 1 uh, verse 12. Another dimension poured to the Colossians. Glory to Jesus. We give thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father. This is what the Father has done. He has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Say, I've been qualified by God. This simply removes anything to do with rejection. You are not rejected. Rejection is not your portion. Everything God has for you you shall have it. I said everything God has for you, you will have it. You have been qualified already by God. We need to give thanks to him. He's made us partakers, part of. We are part of the commonwealth of Israel. Ephesians says, now we are no longer strangers. We are no longer foreigners. We are fellow citizens. We are members of the household of God or the family of God. He has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Praise God. In the light. What light? Revelation. Illumination. If you can come to a level of understanding, you will become partaker of the inheritance. If you don't know, then you don't know. If you don't know, then you do not know. You can never come to what you don't know. But if light comes to your spirit if you get to come to know praise God then you shall enjoy your inheritance praise God I'm reminded of first Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4 Paul writing to the Thessalonians he tells them uh, something about their knowing knowing first Thessalonians 1 uh, 4 knowing beloved brethren your election by God. You see, you need to know that you are elected. You need to know you are chosen. You need to know you are qualified to be part of those whom God has called as sons on the earth to inherit. Praise God. What is the message I'm just trying to say in these several verses? Whatever God intended and predestined to be yours is yours. You are the one to inherit it. Praise God. But let me tell you. There are forces of the enemy that try daily to battle, to fight, to kill the son. That you do not harvest. You do not harvest. Oh my God. Every time. There are certain people every time just before 
they get their miracle are bad flies it's like a spiritual bad a demon and disrupts the opportunity they go back to ground you know to step zero i pray this month of june any time you begin a journey you shall not return you shall go to the end this is the word of the lord thank you jesus because this is the time god has released this anointing the saints of god who are sons of the most high shall eat of their fruit you shall harvest that which you planted your investment shall not collapse on the way it shall come to fruition it shall come to the summit it shall come to the climax can you receive the word of god god's people i declare you are not a generation that shall lose you are not a loser you shall not lose your money you shall not lose your opportunities you shall not lose why do you have major certificates and then you lose you live like a beggar i declare kapure bosha imni money that came from my pocket to pay for anything it shall not be lost because this is my inheritance i am a son i must inherit and i'm a call here together with jesus i wish the church of christ can hear me everything god has intended for you anything he has purposed in christ is yours and it's time this month to battle kabosha to battle for this purpose god has anointed us to battle we shall battle my god we shall battle for life church we shall battle for your family we shall battle for your job and career we shall battle for your children none of your children shall become a mukora it's not possible we shall battle our children shall be mighty on the earth it's time to battle Kayebo. ah my jesus go to isaiah 62 and verse 8 and listen to a prophetic word to israel regarding this matter the lord has sworn by his right hand my god have you ever seen somebody lifting up their hand in the judiciary in the court and swearing by his right hand or with the word of god or something here god has sworn with his right hand and by the arm of his strength praise god in other words with his hand that is mighty and strong to save and to deliver with his mighty arm of his strength he in other words he is serious i say god is serious about your case i said god is serious about your case i said god is serious about your case what has he said surely my god did you hear jesus say of a truth i said to you very very i said to you he yes, says surely i will no longer give your grain as food for your enemies and the sons of the foreigner shall not drink your new wine for which you have labored i declare in the month of june in this house the lord jehovah has sworn with his right hand he has sworn with the arm of his strength whatever you have labored for you are the one that shall eat it you are the one that shall enjoy it am i talking to somebody this morning god says surely your food shall not be eaten by your enemies demons witches sorcerers cannot get your offering evil altar cannot get your money my god your food and your new wines cannot be drunk kabusheba by the foreigners ye poda no way go to the next verse hear this god is serious but those who have gathered it shall eat it my god they shall praise the lord i declare its praise shall feed your mouth as you eat the fruit of your labor and as you enjoy the inheritance that you have in christ you shall praise the lord anything that has been making you mad sad and dark is over Kabosha. this month of june i declare it's over anything that has been stealing your praise because you have nothing to celebrate you have nothing to rejoice over you have no good news to enjoy because the enemy has risen against you god says the reverse is gonna happen you shall eat uh, and you know uh, 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 that which you have gathered and praise the lord and those who have brought it together shall drink it in my holy courts 
Ha. Go to verse 10. The Bible says, go through. Now you can go through. I say you can go through. You can go through the gates. Prepare the way huh, for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Take out the stones. Lift up a banner for the people. Lift up a standard. I come here this morning to lift a standard. In the month of June, you are battling for your inheritance. I declare you are going to arrive. You shall go to the sanctuary arrive. You shall come to your purpose. You shall come to the summit of your career. You, Kayebosha, Makata. I know the Greeks, they talked about self actualization and many people still are in the low the lowest place of human need but i hear maslow say you can come to a place of self actualization instead of you know the highest place in human terms in greek human terms that you can in life come to self actualization to the highest place but i have good news for you in god you can come higher in Jehovah, you shall come up higher. Not when you are old, but in the month of June. Not when you are old, but in this season. The Bible says now is the time. When you hear the word, that becomes the time. The Kairos moment. The very appointed moment of your favor is when you hear the word. Today, as long as it's called today, glory to God. Go through, go through and prepare the way. Remove the stumbling stone, the, the, the stones and so forth and so forth and so forth. Jesus Christ. Now, I've just introduced and I, I wanted to go to Genesis 14 and Numbers chapter uh, 22. But we'll still go there. The day is still young. I said we'll still go there. This service is very short. Oh, it's me who is a long distant preacher. How can it end like that? Okay. We are going to battle for inheritance in the month of June. Genesis 14, we have Abraham and his family. And his nephew Lot ends up because of strife. Failure to know that now that Kijana ulikuja na ukafuata Abraham. The man is the inheritor of the earth. So stop trying to get a 50 by 100 for yourself. Because you have a few cows. And you're saying your cows are quarreling with the cows of Abraham. He's your papa. The Lord did not understand. Anyway, there was a separation. He went on the way of Sodom. But later, Lot gets in trouble. There's a battle even Abraham is involved in the battle of the kings and there are these kings in the area because Abraham stepped into a region where there was so much wealth and each king in the area was battling with another king and that's the situation we are in right now. Every kingdom fighting with another kingdom. You can see now how political kingdoms are so much now on fire and elections is not next month. It is a battle of the kings. It shall be won in the spirit, not by, by narratives. I tell you the truth. It's my prayer. All these keshas we have been doing from 2015, when God said to me, this month the keshas will create a womb for the nation. And every month we do a kesha and praying all these prayers for the whole of the 12 months or 11 months of 2015, plus the months of this 2016. All those prayers are in the spirit. I tell you the truth, they are going to come as a flood. This nation shall be saved at the nick of time because the Lord is still Jehovah. As long as the saints of the Most High are in this city, this city, we must be the ruling spirit. And the dynasty, uh, dynasties of Nyanza and Central as they fight, the church shall not suffer in the middle. The church got to pass through, pass through above these two powers and be able to operate above. Oh, you're not understanding because some of you are captives of your tribe. I transfer you from your tribe to the kingdom. Get out of your cocoon of your tribe. Come to the kingdom. Come to a higher place in God because we must fight for
for inheritance. And all the people who come under this apostolic commission, they shall enjoy the blessings of God the Father. Hallelujah. I may have spoken above your heads, but you will understand it after some days. Glory to God in the highest. We have a prophetic responsibility in the city to rule in the atmosphere. Glory to God. And it's not by numbers. It's by the understanding of two or three in this place who understand the mandate we have in the spirit. As long as we lift some worship and lift some prayer and release a prophetic word, we shall rule in the midst of our enemies. And the devil can do nothing about it. 